Now, the Navy has two documents um, that are on the internet. Uh, one of them is the, uh, the final September 2014 document. Uh, and in that very long document, it goes on for many, many pages. There are only two sentences in this entire document, which as far as I can determine, have anything to do with human health. And so let me quote this statement. There are no conclusive direct hazards to human tissue as a result of electromagnetic radiation. Links to DNA fragmentation, leukemia, and cancer due to intermittent exposure to extremely high levels of electromagnetic radiation are speculative. Study data are inconsistent and insufficient at this time. And then they have one citation to uh, a Faki et al. article uh, published in Mutation Research. Um, so, okay, so there, there are several problems with this two-sentence statement. One is that they imply <clears throat> that you only have to look that you only have to worry about extremely high levels of exposure and that's simply wrong we know that because there are thousands of studies that have shown it's wrong over and over and over again so you know this is an implication it is not explicitly stated here but you know but it indicates basically that the navy doesn't really know what they're talking about um, Secondly, they say links to DNA fragmentation are, are speculative. That's just simply not true. I reviewed the literature on single-stranded breaks in DNA in the first paper that I published. I found 19 different studies that found breaks in DNA. There were also eight that did not. But what you also find when you look at that literature is, the, is that when you look at different cell types, they, they respond differently. So you can have one cell type responding with a particular field exposure, another cell type not responding. So when you see that difference, you're just looking at differences in cells. And we all know that different cells uh, are different. They're not all the same. So <clears throat> that's, not, that's not an inconsistency at all. It's just simply biological heterogeneity. Similarly, you find differences in different fields. And we've, we've already talked about how those can be generated. So, you know, um, so this is it's just sheer nonsense, you know, the claim that, they're, that these things are inconsistent. They're not inconsistent. There are no inconsistencies in those data. Okay, so that's, that's, that's one problem with this statement, this two-sentence two statement. Another one is they say that, um, um, that the, uh, uh, the effects on leukemia are... Uh, speculative uh, and 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 when you look at the Faki et al uh, paper that's not what they say at all they say that childhood leukemia is in fact well associated with these exposures so it is caused by those exposures and so they they're the one citation they make here contradicts statements that they make and um, okay so um, there, there are several other things I can say about this, but um, the, the, the Faki et al. article, and let me, let me read you the title of the article. It says, DNA fragmentation in human fibroblasts under extremely low frequency electromagnetic field exposure. So the first thing is they find that there, are DNA, there is DNA fragmentation. There is single-stranded DNA breaks in these cells. So that, again, contradicts what the Navy says that they say. Um, secondly, they're looking at extremely low frequency electromagnetic field exposures. So what are those? Those are, those are the kinds of exposures that we get from the wiring in our house or from uh, high voltage power lines. And uh, those are not the kind of exposures that the Navy is planning to use in the Olympic Peninsula. So why they pick this study to cite as the only citation in this whole thing that presumably says that, they, that we don't have to worry about, uh, uh, about human health effects, I mean, it's, it's, it's just ridiculous. I mean, it's just... Um, 
So this is an incredibly sloppy, poorly thought out um, document. It really is uh, amazing. Professor, can you talk about animals then, the exposure to animals? And this is yeah, wildlife, wildlife, which, wildlife. Yeah, I haven't said anything about wildlife in the Olympic Peninsula, and that's that's a good point. Um, you know, I think obviously animals are, are a similar concern, uh, and specific types of animals are a special concern. So we know that um, birds seem to be uh, particularly sensitive to these, particularly migrating birds, and uh, this is a major uh, migration flyway, and they really don't tell us anything that that gives us any assurances that birds are not going to be severely impacted. We have some evidence that, uh, that uh, amphibia are very sensitive to these fields, and we've had a, a, a decline in amphibian populations over much of the world, which may be due, in part at least, to uh, EMF exposures. And so the notion that they can assure us that none of that's going to go on here is, is kind of ridiculous. Um, and there is some evidence that some groups of insects are particularly sensitive as well, including bees. Um, let me say that what's interesting and, 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 and more than a bit surprising is that plants actually respond to these, uh, these um, microwave EMFs in much the same way that we do. That is, they in plants, there are uh, calcium channels that have a, a voltage sensor that's really quite similar to what the VGCCs have in, in us and in, in animals. And, uh, and, and that, those, uh, those, those channels in, that occur in the plasma membrane of plants are activated by these fields. So, uh, so the plants may be quite severely impacted as well. And so, you know, they, they give us assurances that none of these things are going to happen. They give us no data whatsoever to support this is just sheer supposition. The Navy also has a second document which they put on, uh, which uh, is a short document, it's only seven pages, which is their finding of no significant impact, okay? That's the title of the document. And, uh, and in there they have actually a slightly longer statement that relates to human health. So what they say is the Navy's safety policies and procedures ensure that placement uh, of and use of both the fixed and mobile emitters is conducted safely and monitored at all locations. These procedures minimize the potential for interaction between military and civilian activities by ensuring that emitter operators adhere to specific safety precautions designed to prevent electromagnetic hazards to people, schools, and child care centers. Therefore, no significant impact on public health and safety would occur as a result of implementation of the proposed action. All right, so that's the sum total of what they have to say. So the sum total is basically, oh, we know what we're doing, therefore you don't have to worry about it. Um, the problem basically is that they give us no evidence that they know what they're doing. So, so what the Navy is doing here is, is, is telling us they know what they're doing, but some of the things they tell us are frankly unbelievable. So let me, let me give you a, a specific example of that. Um, they say that they're going to uh, monitor these responses at all locations. They give us no information of how they're going to monitor them or what they mean by all locations. Uh, let me just say, because of the problems that I discussed before, the only way you can monitor these things is to measure biological effects. And you need to measure biological effects then at all locations. Uh, frankly, it's totally unbelievable that they're gonna, they're gonna uh, measure biological effects at all locations in the Olympic Peninsula while they're doing these studies. Um, so my question, you know, for the Navy is, well, what, what do they mean by this? I mean, this is totally, you know, it's totally, uh, there, there's, there's no substance to it that you can figure out. And then when they say that when the procedures minimize the potential for interaction um, and, and specifically to prevent electromagnetic hazards to people, schools, and child care centers, um, on what basis? 
is this made? I mean, what's, what is, you know, we, we know that the safety standards are based on heating and we know that heating is not, the, is not the mechanism. So on what basis can you possibly make this claim? Um, you know, <clears throat> and the conclusion that therefore no significant impact on public health and safety uh, uh, would occur is based on a false premise. It's based on the premise that, uh, that the safety standards have some scientific merit, which they don't. So, I mean, you know, I have to say, frankly, I, I am, I am uh, you know, I've seen a lot of, you know, there's so many different things that are occurring in our world that are bizarre and shocking. And I thought I probably wouldn't see anything shocking to me anymore because I've been shocked so much that none of the things seem to be shocking. But I am shocked by this. This is incredibly sloppy. Um, it, has, it shows no concern whatsoever for the health and safety of the people of the Olympic Peninsula. And uh, I, I, I really find it bizarre that the Navy, which is supposed to be involved in protecting us, would, would, uh, would expose us to these kinds of things that, that are clearly going to have major biological effects.